What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Triple Play Fantasy Network. As always, I am your host, Kevin Coleman, at Dubois underscore 22. And we are doing another edition of our Debbie Breakdown Series. And hey, fa- man, college football is coming fast, guys. We are almost here. It's August 8th. You know, August 28th, we're going to see some games. So I want to get out some of these games and some of these teams, these lower level teams that not a lot of people are talking about, but they deserve a little bit of a shout out. So let's get started. Indiana Hoosiers. You know, we're going to break down the 2021 team just to kind of recap what they did last year. You know, Tom Allen, head coach, is he's got them humming and they've been playing very well for Indiana football. They went six and two last year, obviously, even with Michael Penix Jr. getting hurt. Uh, you know, they had a great when you look at their games and what they've been able to do and what Tom Allen's been able to do there, it's been fantastic when you look at that. They start off the year with that great win against Penn State. They went, you know, won four games. They beat Michigan, uh, which isn't hard. Then they lost to Ohio State by seven, then beat Maryland and Wisconsin, and then lost to Mississippi in their bowl game 2026. But Michael Penix was out. We know that. Uh, and we'll talk about Michael uh, here in a little bit. But you know what? Tom Allen's got them humming. He got them doing well. We're going to look at the recruiting class in a little bit, doing those things. Like you should be very, you should feel happy if you're an Indiana football fan. And, and it's one of the best stadiums in the Big Ten. I really enjoy it, as you can see there. Uh, let's look at the schedule. Let's take a look at this. Let's go down there. So, like always, we can go over schedule, team, breakdown, Debbie aspects, C2C aspects. Next year's recruiting class, which Indiana has done a very good job with that. So we're just going to be looking at it all. So let's look at the 2021 schedule at Iowa. That's a tough game right out of the gate. We're going to see what they are, see if they can come out there and win that game. Uh, Idaho, September 11th should be an easy game. Cincinnati, that's going to be a fun game to watch. You know, what will they be? Can they beat Cincinnati, a team that a lot of people have picked right now to be a dark horse in the uh, for the playoff? Western Kentucky, Penn State, Michigan State, Ohio State, Maryland. So Typical Big Ten schedule. Uh, you know, for me, the games that really, hey, Iowa, that game's going to matter. Who are they? What are they? We're going to find out very quick against Iowa. Uh, and I think that's the game to circle. Just say, hey, who is this Indiana team? Can they come out? Can they kind of be that Tom Allen team that we like to see? Uh, you know, they averaged 29 points per game last year, and they, they were humming on offense. So we're going to see how that goes and what that looks like. But when you look at their schedule, it's very doable. Uh, obviously, Michigan State, Ohio State right there in the middle of their schedule. That's going to be tough. Maryland as well at Maryland. That's a tough game. Uh, but maybe they could shock Ohio State. Maybe they'll be the team that does that. Now, if we go through their, their depth chart and, and what they have, you know, we're going to the quarterbacks. So, you know, Jackson Hole came in last year uh, when Michael Penix Jr. got hurt. Right now, Michael Penix Jr. has ADP 190.70, QB 40. Now, when we talk about Michael Penix Jr., and that's really what we got to talk about, you know, 6'3", 218, big kid. 2020 stats, you know, last year he had 124 uh, attempts, completions, excuse me, and 220 attempts. He had a 56% completion percentage. So that is the key when we talk about him is that he, he, it's just his accuracy. Uh, and obviously his injuries too, we'll get into that. But, you know, he had 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, four interceptions. He had 18 attempts, 25 yards, two touchdowns. He's not a rushing threat, but he is a – mobile quarterback in terms of in the pocket and we'll and we'll talk about it but you know the big problem with him is injuries you know he missed last season with the acl tear they tore against maryland uh then you know the previous two seasons he also had an acl injury in that same knee and then he hurt his shoulder in 2019 and so he has not been able to stay healthy i think that's the biggest thing with michael it's not so much talent because the talent's there the profile's there everything that he has is there it's just his inability to stay healthy uh, if he had stayed healthy, he could have maybe fixed some of his inaccuracies, the things that he has to work on. But when you watch him play, I mean, he, he the thing about him is he's just an athlete. He's just a football player. He's a gamer. You saw that in that Penn State game. You know, this was the game against Ohio State. You'll notice his platform gets well. And I think the biggest thing from what I saw with scouts, I mean, that's a hell of a throw right there. I mean, that's an NFL level throw. Like that's a legit throw in pressure. The scouts talked about his ability to just stand in there and take hits. And he does that. But the problem is, is he takes those hits and then gets injured. So there is that. I think that he has natural ability as a passer and he's a pure athlete. So he has that. He's got mental toughness. He takes hits. He's able to stand in there and pressure. Um, He does all those things. He's going to thrive with modern spread concepts. So we know that. I think that he has a good zip on the ball too. 
Like it's he's got a zip, but his release is just wonky. So like he gets the ball out quick, and you'll see that. And he has a good zip that's there. His accuracy, I think, some a scout I saw a scatter shot. It's just all over the place. Sometimes it's on the money, and sometimes it's not. And that's his completion percentage. You, you'll see that. And, and there's over times where he overthrows his target because he has that talent. He has that vertical talent, but he just overthrows it. But he is a gamer. He he got Indiana back in this game. Uh, they almost came back and won. Uh, you know, when you're looking at him, what he does well, you know, or what he actually struggles with, I think that, that he got to streamline that release a little bit and he's just got to stay in the game, stay healthy. But he does make some throws that you're saying, like, damn, he's got some talent and some potential, but he just needs a quarterback room development. I mean, that, I think that's the key. He has tools, but what can he be at that next level? Now, if we're talking about C2C, if he stays healthy, he's a pretty good value. Like, if we're talking about, like, hey, can he put up numbers? Yeah, I mean, he can. Uh, when we were looking at it last year and what he was able to do last year, he, he could do it, like, when you when you watched him. Um and, you know, when you look at, like, like we said, when we, when we put up his numbers, you'll see his numbers here. Um, he had it there. Like, he scores touchdowns. He, he 14 touchdowns, four interceptions. He is their offense. So, from a C2C perspective, if he can stay healthy, he might not be a bad shot. Like we talked about, he's going to QB 40. You know, you're going to get one year of production from him, more than likely. And then that's what you have. Um, maybe two, maybe two, but that's probably where you're going to be. So that's Michael Penix. That's the quarterback situation. And, and Jack Tuttle came in and did well last year. I think he's a good backup. We're going to be talking about the recruiting class and what they have coming. Uh, but they did well. Now, let's go to the running backs. So, you know, they have Stephen Carr. He's a USC transfer. Uh, over for you know from USC, uh, we'll get into him right now. He's going to the running back 93, 265.4. Uh, Samson James, who I actually really kind of like, uh, he's going as running back 137. And you know, and Samson, someone that I actually have on a couple of my C2C teams, uh, before the before the car, you know, the damn car thing, uh, and transfer, it looked a lot better. But when you look at what Samson can bring, you know, Samson is 6'1, 220, big kid. Um, he only rushed for 96 yards last year at 32 carries. I thought this would be the year that he has it. So it does scare me a little bit that they got a transfer to come in and take kind of take his role. But he's going to play a role. Like you, You're going to see him a little bit more. Tim Walton Jr. too. But let, let's get into Stephen Carr. Six foot, 215. You know, obviously at his career stats at USC, there's a reason why he transferred. 264 attempts, 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns. He could just never get it going. Uh, 57 receptions, 421 yards, and one touchdown there. He just couldn't stay healthy. Uh, there was a lot of issues with with what he had. I will be honest. If you watch the USC video, which we just put out, I talk about that rushing attack scheme where it limits the running backs. It definitely limits Steven. So I want everybody to understand that, that it limited him in, in him too. So that scheme at USC does hurt the running backs. But let's talk about the good and, and kind of go over what he did. I think he's a capable receiver. Uh, he runs hard, and you'll notice that here. Remember, he was a five-star recruit. He had offers from Alabama, Oklahoma, all these different places before he committed to USC. So he was a highly touted recruit. So there, he has that that capital of being that five-star guy. He has quick feet. I, you know, he has he has quick feet when he hits that line. He's got some long speed to go with it too. You'll see it here. Look at his feet. His footwork is impeccable, and and that's one of the things that you get him there. He has speed in every area, so he hits the straight line fast. He hits quickness. He hits burst. He has acceleration. Like when he's healthy, he can do it all and that's run kind of shows you everything that you need to know about him now the biggest problem is he's he's injury injury riddled and you'll notice that battle foot ankle injuries surgery for a herniated disc he he has that smaller frame you know he's not as big he, he kind of he can run a little high he gets hit a little bit hard but you, you know where is he going to be and, and you'll see that and, and you know he's not a strong runner He's going to go down in the first contact he's not someone that gets a ton of positive gains at the after he gets hit uh and he does do that, but you'll notice it here. I mean, he had a lot of swing passes, those type of things, because that's what USC runs. He can do that. He has quick feet. He hits the whole hard. I, to me, he's a C2C asset and not a Debbie one, um, and especially even in this class, which is kind of down. But I like him. I think that he's going to do very solid at, at Indiana. I think that they're going to – I think that, you know – some people are, are counting on him being like that guy. I think Samson James is going to play a little bit more of a role if we're talking about like a hey, in that Indiana offense. Uh, but that's a great transfer to have. And if he can live up to the hype, which he was a five star guy, now we're talking about Indiana having a, a powerful offense. So it really just depends on that. But as far as Debbie goes, I'm out on him and Debbie. Now, wide receivers, um, you know, really there's only one guy to talk about because everybody else is not getting drafted. Uh, and that's that, that's Ty Freifogel. 
you know, right now his ADP is 333.00, wide receiver 152. You know, he is a senior. He's returning. You know, many thought he was going to come out to the NFL, uh, but he did not. He went back to school. 6'2", 214, 2020 stats last year at 37 receptions, 721 yards, and seven touchdowns. So nothing like eye-popping here. But, again, remember, it was eight games. He dealt with injuries with Michael Penix Jr., uh, accuracy issues. Like, there's some things going on here with with Ty. Uh, But, you know, let's watch his tape and let's talk about what he does well. And And I think... The one thing that I love about him, he, he's very good route runner. Like, so when you watch him, he's very nuanced. Does a really good job of attacking attacking the, his defender. He does a very good job of understanding the advantages with his defender, changing directions. He's a re, very refined route runner. Now, I didn't say that he could make separation a lot, but he's very refined. Like, there's a lot of good things to like about him. There's nothing that you're going to need to really, like, that pops off about it, but it's just very, it's fine. It's very refined. Now, um, you know, he has a great contested catch ability. I think that's probably his strength, but what worries me is that that is his strength because he can't create separation. So I get worried about the way receivers can't create separation anymore because that's what we've seen in the NFL. That's what the problems that we've seen, you know, Tillon Wallace does not have that, that, that ability to separate. And I think that's the key. Like he doesn't separate at the line. He gets pressed a lot. Physicality, he has it, but he's, then he doesn't have the speed to get off the burst. So I think as a college wide receiver, he's going to be just fine. I, I really question what he can be in at the next level. Um, and that's kind of why his ADP is so low. Um, I saw him going from the 24th to the 34th round of C2C draft. So as far as just C2C, those type of things, I wouldn't expect too much from him. He's probably a bi-week filler. Hopefully, maybe you have best ball in, in college football, which they have. Uh, that's kind of that mindset there. Uh, but again, great contested catch ability, but the separation thing scares me the most. Now, tight ends, it's really one guy. It's Peyton Hendershot. His ADP is 370, tight end 40. Now, Peyton was a type of kid that we all thought was going to go to NFL last year uh, because of his, you know, he didn't have a great 2020. We'll talk about why. His career stats, he has 90 receptions, 936 yards, and 10 touchdowns. So, hey, you know, solid production. You know, he's 6'4", 250. He's he's pretty big. But uh, one of the biggest things about Hendershot was he got arrested uh, before the 2020 season in January for a domestic disturbance. Since then, he's been back on the team, but that's the biggest red flag. So the biggest thing is he's got some off-field issues. It's one of the reasons why he probably came back to school. Try to air that out. Now, he did get um, nominated for the Mackey Award winner uh, this year, a preseason Mackey Award winner. So, you know what? People know that he's talented. He doesn't have a ton of tape. I think what he does well is like, hey, in the red zone, he's there. He's kind of a hybrid receiver slash tight end. So he's kind of like what we've been talking about in the NFL, what they want from their tight ends. He's a marginal upside as a blocker. He's not a very good blocker, but he's going to do stuff very effectively in the red zone. And you'll see that they pretty much just use him there off of play action passes a lot. That's when they use him. You'll see it here, kind of a hybrid H back, put it in motion, play action, get him out in space. I mean, that's really what they do with him. After that, not not a lot. You know, he, he can fill the gaps kind of well. You saw it right there. He can find the open space and do it. Not a lot of upside with this kid. Uh, very, very, very hot, low ceiling. He's got an okay floor, but low ceiling for this kid. Uh, I like his size, but it's more of that hybrid-ish, you know, play action pass ability. Um, now, C2C targets where I would target is Steven Carr, six foot 215, you know, like we talked about anyway. I think, you know, when we look at his ADP, which is right now running back 93, where he's at with maybe the volume that he's going to get, let's say Michael Penix gets hurt again. They're going to use them more in the ground. Like he could legitimately kind of propel your C2C team there. I don't mind targeting him right now, but it's one year of production. So you got to understand that you're going to get one year and that's it. So for me, it's like, hey, I'll, I'll take that kind of band aid if I need it on my team, if I need some roster or some some stats from a low end roster player. Uh, but he's pretty much my only target on this team from a C2C standpoint. Nobody else I think is going to be as valuable um, as Carr. I would say Phoenix, but I guess he stay healthy. He's coming back from ACL. There's a lot of issues with him. Uh, if he can stay healthy, yes, but I, I, I'm going to take my chair out of car. Now, the recruiting class, though, damn, listen here. Allen's got them humming right now. Right now, the, the rank, this is the 22 ranked uh, recruiting class in the country for 2022. Last year was 54, which is about what we see from Indiana usually. 22 is legit. Like, Allen's got them going. 
you look at what he does, you know, he's got an edge rusher. He's got the number four um, overall ed, um, recruit right now, uh, or excuse me, position, edge rusher, 52 nationally, uh, corners and all that. But the three offensive players we're going to talk about right now, uh, first is Josh Hoover, quarterback. Then we'll go over and we'll, we'll be watching tape on Omar Cooper and Josh Hoover today. And a recent recruit they just got is Jabran Payne, running back um, out of LaSalle, out of Ohio. And, you know, he's a four-star kid too. Like they got basically two four-star kids and a three-star quarterback who I think may get into that four-star category. You know, Hoover, 6'1", 206. His career stats right now is 6,000 yards passing, 68 touchdowns, 19 interceptions. We'll go into him. And then we got Omar Cooper Jr., who you're going to see first on the highlight tape. You know, his career stats, 91 receptions, 2,000 yards, and 27 touchdowns. This kid's pretty good, and he can play a little bit. Like, they've got some kids. So let's take a look. And first guy you're going to see is Omar. You know, Omar Cooper, one thing that stands out about him, hey, he, like I said, his size is 6'1", 185. He has some pretty other good, you know, when you watch him and you watch his tape and his his offers that he had, he had very good offers. He, he He's kind of a gamer. You know, and you'll notice it here, his 50-50, he's athletic as hell. You see that catch right there. You'll see the athleticism in there. 50-50 balls, he does the same. You know, Indiana tends to like those type of wide receivers, as we just saw with uh, Ty. Uh, but, again, you look in here, he has a return ability, which I think that is going to be, you know, that could help uh, his upside, get him on the field earlier, show his athleticism, those type of things. Um, and he has that. He does that well. I think the one thing that I liked, to, I liked about him the most – uh, is just that he, he's been very consistent. He uh, he's had two straight thousand yard receiver uh, seasons in high school, fourteen touchdowns and thirteen touchdowns each season. Uh, receptions went down a little bit in twenty twenty, but that just shows me that he had more big playability. And you'll see it here. Get him in space, bubble screen, taking off. Like when I watched his tape, like there were some things that really stood out to me. Like I've watched a lot of tape over the summer, and if you watch these videos, you know I've watched a lot of tape. When I watched his tape. Yeah, he has some flaws. He's he's got to get more refined, you know, size a little bit more, competition problems. That's another thing. But when you watch him, he's explosive. Look at that. I mean, he just took that thing to the house. Not a lot of players can do that. Like that's legit. Um, that's a legit explosive explosiveness, legit athleticism. And and his team just did that. Got him in the zone. You'll see it here. Reads it well. I think he's a very smart receiver. I think he has some some very very good upside. Now, the other kid here, as we get into Josh Hoover, you know, when we watch Josh, you know, he he got offered by Houston. He got offered by SMU. So, you know, there were some schools going after him. Arkansas offered him as well. They were really hot on him. I like his arm strength. You'll see it there. I like his size, 6'1", 206. You want to see him probably get a little bit bigger. Uh, his arm is legit. You know, he, he's got good accuracy. You'll you'll see him here uh, making that throw to the outside of numbers. Back shoulder throw here um, where his receiver can get it. That's a very good throw, too. Like he's a very solid prospect. He's the type of kid that Indiana needs uh, to come in and kind of solidify that room. You notice they don't have a lot of depth on that roster, uh, so he's going to come in and compete, I think, right away. Again, I like I like his platform, and, and when he gets the ball out quick, and he has a pretty good release. I think it's a little elongated when I watch it. Uh, it's not the quickest thing in the world, but he he can get it out. You'll notice it here. It's a little elongated. He knows where he's going. He's a good thinker of the game. They talked about him having some intangibles there, and I like that. But you'll notice that release needs to get worked on. Footwork can be a little happy feet sometimes, but he does have that right there, accuracy and arm strength. And I, I'll take that all day, especially for a kid that's a three-star right now. Right now he's a – Quarterback 33 of this class. I'm going to see – I bet you that jumps up a little bit. But, you know, QB 33 for, for this team, especially if, hey, PNX leaves or, you know, stays there, keeps getting injured, those type of things. We could talk about him in a couple of years. So keep an eye on Josh. Now, the one guy that we don't have film on right away because the film was just messed up. I couldn't really – it was high school film, of course. Uh, but that's your brand Payne, 5'10", 190. You know what? You know, 247 Sports has him comp to Damian Harris. I don't necessarily see that, but he is the running back 24 of this class. Right now, he, he did have, hey, he he had some offers from Alabama, Boston College, Cincinnati. He chose Indiana. So he's got good one-cut ability, good acceleration. Um, right now, his career stats, 77 rushes, 790 yards, and nine touchdowns. So nothing to sneeze at, but, you know, it's there. Uh, he hits the crease hard. He's not really a big back, but when you look at him and his size, he's pretty compact. He could probably put on another 15, 20 pounds when he gets to college. He, he has that ability to get to the – to the next level, but he needs to get a little bit faster. So, and then he's also dealt with some injuries when you look at it. So there's not as many stats, not as, not as 
big of stats as we've seen from, from previous guys that we've looked at the running back position, but he's a four-star kid and it's not a bad gift for Indiana. So again, they needed to kind of solidify that, bring in that class. So Indiana's success has let them have a, a top, a better recruiting class. And that's legitimately what they need to build. So again, Indiana, not a bad program and not, and Tom Allen's doing very well. But again, remember the Iowa game, you need to circle that one. And Cincinnati, those two games, we're going to find out real quick. By week three, we're going to know what Indiana is. Again, quarterbacks, Michael Penex, QB 40, what he's done. Running back, Stephen Carr, running back 93, what he's done. Ty, Hendershot, here's my C2C targets, and then there's your recruiting class. So, as always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. We're going to have a few more of these before we have the college football season. I promise to get that done for you guys. I cannot thank you guys enough for the support for the YouTube channel and just for me personally. I really appreciate you. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, and I'll see you guys later.